Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a bivalve comparison. I've got three of the four types of bivalves. I have a clam, I have a mussel, and I have an oyster right here. Um, the bivalve that I'm missing is a scallop, but when you guys um, eat scallops or buy scallops, you are actually not eating the whole entire scallop. You're eating what we call an adductor muscle. So what I wanna do today is go through the different structures of bivalves, um, their functions, and how these three bivalves have, or have their differences for their particular environments. So first thing is if you look at the shells, you can definitely see the growth rings. Phylum mollusca sh um, grows their shell with them for the rest of their life. Um, so you can see all of these growth rings right here, all the growth rings right there. The point where the shells come together is called the umbo, okay? And it has a hinge right here. So let's go ahead and start with looking at the clam. So these guys were um, steamed. We bought these fresh and one note, when you buy um, bivalves fresh, it's really important to make sure that they are fully closed. That means that they are alive. If the shell is already opened, then that means that they are dead and you probably don't wanna eat something that was already dead. Okay, so we steamed these for a couple minutes and what happened is because they died, these two structures right here, these are your adductor muscles in the clam, they released the shell and that's what actually caused them to open. One thing I want you guys to realize is on the inside of shells, you can actually see scarring. So this area right here and this circle right here is where these two adductor muscles used to be attached. Okay, and then this white area, it kind of looks like a Pac-Man. This is where the mantle or this area used to be attached when it was alive. So it's definitely shrunken down in size. All right, one thing that clams have, like I have said, is they've got two strong adductor muscles. This helps open and close the shell. Clams also have a very large muscular foot. Notice it's kind of uh, spade shaped or shaped like a shovel. That is purely for digging through sand or dirt, okay? So let's go ahead and focus on the adductor muscle and the foot for these three. So clam has two large adductor muscles and a very large muscular foot. Moving over to the muscle, here is their little tiny foot. The foot has been reduced in um, the muscle. And then here is one adductor muscle. And here, see these tiny little things? Kind of looks like nostrils. That is the second adductor muscle. And it is very, very greatly reduced compared to the clam, okay? Going over to the oyster, the oyster has one very, very large adductor muscle, but that is it. And looking around here, there is absolutely no foot. So there is kind of an evolution of shrinking of a large, two large adductor muscles and a large foot to one and a half adductor muscles and a, and a reduced foot to one adductor muscle and zero foot, okay? The reason for this is because muscles are semi-permanently attached and they are semi-permanently attached by using these threads actually right here. Those are called bissel threads. Because they are semi-permanently attached, they don't really need a big foot to help them with their digging. Oysters, on the other hand, are fully attached after their larval stage. They use cementation um, and they will cement themselves to other oysters or other rocks or pilings or whatnot. And because they are never going to move in their adult stage, they have no foot, they have no use for it. Okay, so why have a structure in your body if you do not need it? All right, so that is some of the big differences right there. I also want you guys to look at siphons, okay? These siphons, okay, they are fully attached. There is an in-current siphon, and if you notice, this opening is a little bigger, and there is an ex-current siphon, and the nozzle opening is smaller. With the ex-current siphon comes out filtered water, but also comes out waste. Because they are right next to each other, you don't wanna keep on cycling your waste over and over again. So the in-current siphon has a much wider opening, whereas your ex-current siphon has a, has a narrower opening to shoot the water further away from the body. Um, for this muscle, okay, there's frilly area. You can see some siphons right here, but they are right next to each other once again. And when this animal was alive, like I said before, it was bigger, it filled up all the shell, and the shell would be open, and the water would be filtering through the in-current and the ex-current. And looking at the oyster, they do not have any siphons, okay? Um, because they do not have any siphons, how are they supposed to get their, their food and their oxygen? These guys, when they're underwater, will have to be fully opened up. And I want you to notice there are one, two, three, and four layers of gills, okay? This is a huge amount of surface area for these gills. Because they don't have a directed pathway to have the siphons to pull water in, they have to have a huge surface area to get as much plankton out of the water as they can and oxygen. 
Once the plankton is filtered through the gills, the food particles will get passed to this structure called a labial palp. And the palp is the opening to the digestive system. Once the food goes in, it will go through this whole entire area right here, which is called your visceral mass or the mass of organs. On the muscle, here is the visceral mass or the mass of organs. On the clam, here is the visceral mass right here. So they all have the visceral mass that holds and contains all your organs, okay? Um, looking at the clam, okay? If I pull this mantle back, this is like the skin essentially. Here, right here are these two layers of gills. Notice that these gills are much smaller in size compared to the oyster. Because the clam and also the mussel have the siphon and the direct pathway for the food, the gills don't have to be as big versus the um, oyster having a very large amount of gills. Okay, so clam, 100% mobile, needs that strong muscular foot. Muscle is semi-permanently attached using the bissel threads, has a reduced foot and one reduced adductor muscle. And the oyster is 100% permanently attached using cement, has no foot, only one adductor muscle, and no siphons, but has a large amount of gills. Hopefully that has helped you guys with the comparison. Next time you, um, you go to a restaurant and eat them, enjoy knowing what you are eating. Don't be gross out, they are so tasty to eat. Lots of protein involved if you like high protein diets. Um, and I hope you guys learned a lot. All right, thanks for joining, bye.